play is called Our Town. It was written by Thornton Wilder and produced and directed by Corey Josephson. In this play, you will see Morgan Ruffins, Cheyenne White, Victoria Paula, Aaron Johns, Silas Perry, Carnell Jones, and many more. The name of this town is Grover's Corners, New Hampshire, just across the Massachusetts line, latitude 42 degrees, 40 minutes, longitude 70 degrees, 37 minutes. The first act, it shows a day in our town. The day is May 7th, 1901, and the time, just before dawn. The sky is beginning to show some streaks of light again, over in the east there. That morning star always gets wonderful bright the minute before it has to go, doesn't it? Well, I better show you how our town lies. Up here is Main Street. Way back there, that's the railway station. Tracks go that way. Polish Town is across the tracks and some Canuck families. Over there is the Congregational Church. Across the street, Presbyterian. Methodist and Unitarian are over there. Here are the town hall and the post office combined. Jail's in the basement. <laughs> Brian wants me to speak from these very steps here. Along here is a row of stores, kitchen posts, and horse blocks in front of them. The first automobile is going to come in about five years. Belong to Banker Cartwright, our richest citizen. Lives on the big white house up on the hill. Here's the grocery store and Mr. Morgan's drug store. Most everybody in town mainly just to look to those two stores at least once a day. High school is still farther over. Public schools just about over yonder. Quarter of nine mornings, noon times, and three o'clock afternoon. The whole town can hear the yelling and screaming coming from those schoolyards. This right here is our doctor's house. Doc is. There's some scenery for those who think they have to have scenery. And this is Mrs. Webb's garden. Corn, peas, beans, hollyhock, heliotrope, and a lot of burdo. In those days, our newspaper comes out twice a week, the Grover's Corner Sentinel. And here's Editor Webb's house. And Mrs. Webb's garden. It looks a lot like Mrs. Gibbs, too, only it's got a lot of sunflowers. And right here is a big butternut tree. Wow. Nice town, you know what I mean? Nobody very remarkable come out of it, as far as we know. You know, the earliest tombstones say 1670 to 1680. There's Grover's, Cartwright's, Gibbs's, Percy's. That's the same name as around here now. Well, as I said, it's about dumb. The only lots on are in a cottage where a Polish mother just had twins. And in the Joe Crow house, where Joe Jr. is getting up to deliver the paper. And in the depot, where Shorty Hawkins is getting ready to flag the That's right, the 545 for Boston. Naturally, out in the country, all around, there have been lights on for some time, what's milking and whatnot. But town people sleep late, so another day's already begun. There's Doc Gibbs coming down Main Street. Doc Gibbs died in 1930. The new hospital's named after him. Mrs. Gibbs died first, a long time ago, in fact. She went out to visit her daughter, Rebecca, who married an insurance man in Canton, Ohio, and died there, pneumonia. But her brother was brought back here. She's up in the cemetery now. Mixed in with the whole mess of Gibbs and Hersey. She was Julia Hersey before she married Doc Gibbs to the Congregational Church over there. In our town, we like to know the facts about everybody. There's Doc Gibbs and Mrs. West coming down Main Street, and Doc Gibbs coming back from that baby case. And there's Joe Crowd coming to deliver the paper. Good morning, Doc Gibbs. Uh, morning, Bill. Somebody been sick, Doc. No, Mary Quinn's over here at Polish Town. Do you want your papers now? Oh, uh, yes, I'll take it. I've been serious going on to the world since Wednesday. Yes, sir. My school teacher, Miss Watson, is getting her to a fellow over there in Concord. Hmm, I declare. How do you boys feel about that? Well, of course, it's none of my business, 
But if a person starts out to be a teacher, she ought to stay in. <laughs> How old you need, though? Fine now. I never leave out at all. Only like you said, always tell me when it's going to rain. What's it telling you today? Going to rain? No, sir. Sure? Yes, sir. You ever made a mistake? No, sir. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something about that boy, Joe Crowther. Joe was awfully bright. Graduated from high school here, head of his class. So, he got a scholarship to Massachusetts Tech. Graduated head of his class there, too. It was all written up in the Boston paper at the time. Going to be a great engineer, Joe was. But the war broke out, and he died in France. All that education for nothing. Giddy up, Betsy. What's the matter with you today? And here comes Howie Newsom delivering the mail. Morning, Doc. Uh, morning, Howie. Somebody said? Fairy twins over to Mrs. Girl's slop. Twins, eh? This is going to be bigger over here. Going to rain, Howie. No, no, not a day. Get her Come on, Betsy. Oh, uh, hello, Betsy. How old is she, Howie? Going on 17. Bessie's been all mixed up about the route ever since the Lockhart stopped taking a quarter milk every day. She wants to leave him a quarter just the same. Keep scolding him the whole trip. Good morning, Howie. Good morning, Mrs. Gibbs. I'm just coming up the street. Is he? Seems like a good day. Yes, something wrong with the separator. Don't know what to us. Doc? Howie? Children! 